then we are safe. Checking the bottom. Gave the prize in a 
shared way to people whose, uh, how shall I say, the knowledge which each one of each <coughs> laboratory had brought all together shed a new light on innate immunity, which was an aspect which had not been really investigated in detail. Now, once we understand the innate immunity, um, then a certain number of important uh, aspects became possible. Like, for instance, we now understand, what was not understood 20 years ago, that uh, many adjuvants which you use in vaccination <coughs> Uh, act via the receptors which we discovered with our colleagues. Uh, and uh, so this makes, gives an opening for companies, for medical people, makes an opening to analyze how you can improve quality of the adjuvants, make them more efficient, which is still a problem, and avoid that they have side effects. That's one aspect. Now it also became apparent that Autoimmune, defense, autoimmune reactions in humans can, autoimmune reactions can be dependent, some, some of them to some extent, can be dependent on those receptors which we have to mentioned, the like receptors. And there also companies are trying to develop drugs which interfere with the mechanism of recognition and signaling and so on. Then, you are mentioning cancer therapy. This is a very important topic, and I would say at this stage, it is not demonstrated beyond any doubt that these receptors, the toll-like receptors, play a role in this aspect. It's, a high, it's highly likely, likely but uh, to be careful, it has not been fully demonstrated. So, the idea is, that when chemotherapy or radiation therapy kills a tumor, that much of the material in the tumor cells will be released into the circulation and can then be picked up by lymphocytes, by macrophages, lymphocytes, and so on, and induce production of dedicated killer lymphocytes. Now, is this mediated in some in instances by toll like receptors? Again. I repeat, it is a possibility. I think it has not been proven beyond that yet. So that is that many groups in the world are now working on this. And my guess would be, a young Japanese man asked me uh, last week, sir, what do you have to do to get the Nobel Prize? <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, the best advice I can give you, never think of it. <laughs> Just do what you want to do. But my guess would be that uh, immunotherapy will be one of the uh, Nobel Prizes in maybe 15 years, 20 years. It takes a long time, most, not always. <coughs> well, yeah, but I tried to go in six years, but uh, otherwise. It, uh, did I answer your question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, inflammation is a very important problem. Inflammation is, but inflammation is really mediated essentially by those toll like itself. And the inflammation can be totally deleterious. There are thousands of people dying in hospitals of inflammation. And uh, so uh, if you can't devise drugs, and this is what is being, what is being attempted, but some drugs are exist, to dampen down the activity of these receptors and the signaling cascades and so on, you uh, improve the prospects of people suffering from inflammation. You have basically experimented on Drosophila to find up. Yeah, only on this experience. Understandable mm -hmm. immune uh, system. How long, in your view, will it take for uh, this to translate into human? Because you, in your presentation, you said uh, there are several similarities in the human. Yeah. Uh, well, the answer is one year. I mean, uh, after, if we are referring well, the rule work which we did, of course, took uh, much longer, but from the time on, we have pinpointed this whole receptor to be involved in the process of recognition until the day when Charlie Janeway uh, found the human homologue. That took one year. And then the one year later, Bruce Beutler, who is colorian, as you know, Bruce Beutler then showed that uh, it was involved in inflammation. So that took, uh, and then uh, several, 
people got involved in rapid response. I would say, in all, uh, the explosion occurred within three to four years. Okay? But then there's still, as we say in France, there's a long way from the cup, so the wine glass, until the lips. <laughs> and so from that time on, until the drugs became uh, exploited and so on, I would say it's probably still a bit different than opinions. That is the difference between the fly and uh, the mouse. Because the one central molecule, signaling molecule in antibiotic defenses are uh, interferons and the absence from the fly. The fly does, but that's maybe too special for you. <coughs> the fly has a mechanism of interference <coughs> with uh, the RNA, so it cuts the cuts into pieces. That nanos we do not do in similar way. But we have natural killer cells, and they are very reactive, and then we have this hypotoxic T cells, all absent from fires. So you see, we were able, something when, when I could have mentioned this, even though it was not really my topic, but we, with adaptive immunity, have been able to produce antibodies which uh, block toxins, which insects cannot do have been able to produce uh, lymphocytes which are cytotoxic, which kill infected cells, which flies cannot do. And we developed early in our uh, life, uh, early in embryo development, we developed natural killer cells, which also kill the infected cells, which a fly cannot do. So maybe antiviral defenses, in a large sense, are, in flies are not as good a uh, model for mice as they were for antibiotics. are produced through uh, genetic engineering techniques. And um, look at growth hormone. Growth hormone initially was uh, administered from, was extracted from uh, patients who had died from accidents or from anything in the hospital. So the, uh, the endocrine gland, which reduces the growth hormone, was taken out. Then was kept in the cold for some time. That extracted was injected to uh, children whose growth was insufficient. And this brought with it the danger of, as you may know, the Kreuzfeldt Jakob disease. And many patients, many children who got these uh, injections of the growth hormone uh, suffered from Kreuzfeldt Jakob disease, which is something you know, the, in the sense of mad cow disease uh, in cows. So, now what you have to do. What everyone has to do, and I insist on this fiercely, is you have to compare new techniques to what existed before. Growth hormone use, there was no, either you give no growth hormone, and then the people will not grow. I mean, the people who have a defect, a genetic defect, of course. Or you give the growth hormone, and you extract it from uh, dead people, from courses, uh, headed by a younger co worker who is really excellent. And I'm uh, associated with that work. And then I'm also working on this parallel between the TNF receptor pathway and uh, the ID pathway. That is to say, here the basic question is, how do we react to endogenous inducers? When something goes wrong in our organism, like for instance, uh, well, that would, uh, would be uh, neuro neurodegeneration, which 